Welcome back guys. Today I am working on my front radiator support. I'll show you the one that originally was on the car that was severely damaged. Okay, this is the one that I took off. All rusted out here. Bottom was all rusted out. And the back support was rusted out too. And since it was hit, that's all crushed up. And same with the other side. So I had another one that dots that was crashed and hit on the side. It didn't really damage the front. It's not the best shape one. I was hoping to try to find one uh, out in like California area, but I could have no luck. Since this is going to be a rat car, Rotson, Ratson, Rotson, Dotson. But this is the one I'm going to be using. I've been stripping the paint off of it. Now there are some blemishes when it was a spot welded out. This was a long time ago. This is damaged. I don't know. I might not even actually repair some of these or repair the ones for that actually hold the light in. But I'm actually just going to sand this all down, get all this extra paint off of it in smaller places. Backside. It is starting to rust in certain areas. This was actually area that was rusted out I welded all that in same on the other side um, so that's pretty good thing is this holds this has both the bolts that hold the front bumper on a little rust in there so I'm gonna sand up get all the rust out then I'm going to uh, internally encode the frame inside there so prevent it from keep rusting I will probably take a wire brush into there um, and then there's a little spot where I was rusted out. I welded the first time actually welding. Didn't do as good a job, so I'm gonna probably I might cut that back out and re-weld that. So I didn't want to you watch me just sanding this front end because I have quite a few hours into this already sanding. That just gets boring. But I'm almost done with it, so I probably might just show that if I feel like it's too boring to move quick enough, then I, I won't put it in the video. Uh, but what I decided to do, I have three sets of fenders. All three of them are not the best shape, aren't rust, uh, are a little rusted. Um, the ones I thought were in better shape, they were repaired before, and they have a lot of Bondo, actually. I just took a good look at them. So I'm thinking about going kind of back to my original look, what I wanted to do with the car. Since I have one car I got from uh, Virginia, it was completely rusted out but I like the patina of the hood, the fenders, and the trunk, and, I, and the doors. So I still have all of the doors and the fender still for it. Actually, that's the hood right there. And the blue fenders. The doors I have out in the other area. So I'm just trying to get this done as quickly as possible, then I'm going to then just mock all this stuff up, see what it looks like. Since the car was painted orange when it was originally like a green color, I'm actually going to try to strip this orange layer off and then get back down to the original color green. So I'm going to have to be very careful, but I'm not going to use the doors, so I just want the green in some of the areas. And then it'll, I think it'll go pretty good with the blue. So stay tuned. Let's go real quick what I've been using for stripping the paint. Went to stop back at Harbor Freight, these abrasive wheels. Got a few different ones. Pretty much this size, almost to the whole uh, front end of it. It's a four inch one. So I picked another one up. Got one for my drill to get over into smaller corner areas. Ooh, sorry, the sun's really bright. I got a four and a half inch one. Probably didn't need it, but I just went ahead and picked it up since I've been Harbor Freight. Always need new stuff. And then I'm going to try this one. The nylon abrasive oil, 80 grit. Never tried that, so I'll give that probably a shot. Make sure you have your safety glasses. Very important. I have both just in case the outside I'm start sweating. Everything gets foggy. And the next big thing is make sure you have a respirator. Uh, builds up the dust. It just it, You only know, get one set of lungs, you know. Might as well take care of them. So let me uh, get on it.
Okay, I think I got good enough to put primer on it. I didn't need to remove all of the paint. I didn't, there are some sewn spots, but I sanded it really well. And I put a pre-paint prep onto it to make sure that it's nice and clean. The only reason I stripped it down that far was because the car that I came out of was severely hit and had tons of Bondo everywhere. Every little crack corner, there was Bondo. The whole thing was gonna help the other by Bondo. But luckily, that had no Bondo on it. So that's the main reason I just stripped down, just to make sure I wasn't falling into a big pitfall by using that full, full, pitfall, pitfall. Sorry, it's getting hot out here. So I've uh, cleaned it up. So I'm going to paint the areas where I'm going to be welding, though, with well through primer. And then I'm going to just paint the rest of it then with regular primer. Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, it is the next day. I let the primer dry overnight to make sure it is nice and sealed up. Take a look at it. That is a lot better now. On the rustier spots on it, I did spray capsulator on it first. Then I went and put primer over top of it. I'm supposed to give it six hours to dry for, but it was pretty hot yesterday and it seemed to dry really quick. And this is just, I just put this primer on it now so it doesn't rust. I am gonna sand, sand it down before I put uh, probably a high build maybe on it. And if the engine bay I won't. Well, we'll see how much Bondo I end up putting inside the engine bay to smooth everything out. Um, so now I need to get this thing welded in. So I'll show you guys what I'm going to be working with. I sanded most of this rust off, so I'll come back in here. Some really, the uh, lighting's not the best over here. Still rust in there. Originally all this actually went was up here. The whole thing went down to here and welded in. And I think it was about to like right here, there was a plate. And it was behind this main plate here. So it was two layers. So I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna do it the opposite way. I'm gonna put this, sand this all down, make a plate to fit in here, and weld it right here on top to support it, because this are the two holes where the front bumper bolts to. So I got the same thing on the other side. So for welding, I have some spot welds out through here. So I'm gonna take a scratcher and scratch that off, then I'm gonna sand it. Make sure there's no primer. I just went and covered it anyways, but make sure it's nice and sealed. Then, after that's welded in, then I will be start working on the bar that's going to connect to here to here. And I think I decided with I'm going to go with the bar a little further out so this lines up with it better to bolt the um, fenders on. Then I'm going to make a little bracket that comes across that will support this. Because I got to pull the bracket back on this anyways, because this, this was really covered from my other videos if you watched it, and bring it out. Um, so that is that plan there. So for now I'm going to take some measurements, make sure it's nice and centered, and build it in. Well, that was not a lot of fun. The welds look kind of crappy, 
but I'm gonna be grinding them down anyways. Um, probably have to go back and touch up for pinholes. No, I definitely will have to. But I'm not gonna probably grind it down now because I'm gonna decide how I'm gonna do the upper rails first. But let's take a look at this. Light. The big problem I had was that when I did the spot welding, when I removed it originally, made really big holes. Bigger than your standard uh, spot welding, or plug welding, I should say. I'm not going to go upside down and show you. It looks a little worse than those ones that say that for being upside down. I probably should have switched out to a bigger wire when welding. I used um, 0.25, and I should have gone up to, a pro Ooh, I think I have 3.5 or 3 over there. Uh, that's me just being lazy. I probably should have. I didn't want to switch it out because when I did the upper rails, I wanted to use a smaller gauge anyways to try to make it look nicer. But if it looks anything like those, it's not going to. But it's down further and I can see it. I can sand it down. Then I, I can put a little bondo over it though too and just make sure it's nice and smooth. So I'm happy with that. So, this thing hasn't had a radiator support on it now for over a year, I'm guessing. Because last year I really didn't get too much done. I was just overwhelmed with it. Now I'm just, these videos are helping me keep motivated. Sorry about that, guys. The camera stopped recording. I don't know if I moved it, shook it. But all I was going to say is that I was giving, uh, it was giving me motivation to work on my car doing these videos and stuff. So I appreciate if you guys have been watching it. Um, if you like it, give me a thumbs, uh, thumbs up, subscribe. Uh, leave me a comment, you know, if you have any ideas, uh, different things I should try out. i like to hear what you guys think. Until next time, I'll be working on the uh, upper frame rails. I'll mock those up and get those welded in. So stay tuned for next time. Thank you. Bye.